off of the right off of the bedrock. Right at I mean, this is really at high crevice. When the tide comes in, it's washing right against the spot all the time. So we got our sample, just a couple of containers. You really don't need a lot of this. I mean, it's it's just kind of wasteful and excessive to do more than that. that these things are really, really heavy. Oh, they almost fall over from the weight. All right. So the gold cube. Is, uh, actually, I have this set up so that I can add another pump into it. There's a uh, trommel attachment that goes on this, and uh, I just wanted to show you the basic thing, just because a bunch of people talk about them. They talk about the best way to run them, the best way to do this, that you should have this mat or that mat or do this or do that. Well, a lot of people say a lot of things. So for us, we wanted to know absolutely for sure if it's the right thing or if it's not. So what we did was we followed a bunch of people that do this and we saw what they were doing And we tried it. Some stuff works, some stuff doesn't. I mean, it's all, it's all relative, isn't it? But it just kind of works its way down through there and cycles through all those mats. And it kind of goes down this way, down this way, down this way. And there's a tub down in here that catches it. And there's a recirculating pump that's right here. And it's powered by 12 volt. It's a just DC pump. Like a, you know, like a little tsunami pump, bilge pump. I'll even show you what it looks like. That guy sitting right there. It's just an 1100 gallon per hour pump. It runs, you know, like a power sluice or blue bowl, which I have one of those too. But you can see everything just kind of sits in a, in a concrete mixing tub and it's pretty self-contained. Doesn't take up a whole lot of space. You can uh, get some gold out of it. There we go. So yeah, just kind of a fun little thing, but they, they do work, and uh, uh, when we get through this, I'll show you what the cleanup process looks like, and we'll uh, we'll get on to that, and then I'll, uh, I'll run it through the blue bowl in this video as well, so that you can kind of see what comes out of this. Um, now, we ran coffee cans uh, six in total just six coffee cans this size so that's about ah, geez not even three gallons not even three gallons and we're gonna see what comes out of six of these Kind of see as this goes in, I'm gonna pull out a little bit for you to see that.
you just kind of pop this. This is really very heavy black sand, so you can kind of see this is moving a little bit slower than you probably would see in some other gold cube videos. And coming down, you can, you can see what that looks like. I'm gonna just pan that so that you can see there's water going down and there's some little riffles in there. You kind of see it's like some kind of matting in there and in this case it's a it's called a sawtooth matting but it just kind of trails on down and you can actually see it go. Bless you. Bless you again. It's all that fresh air. Yeah, that's it. I think I caught it there. I hope you guys got that on film. All right. There's another little piece. Oh, like right there. It's really tiny. But all of this stuff is like micron. I mean, really like these 500, 600 mesh stuff. But it is heavy. Okay, so we got the uh, cube disassembled. I'm gonna come in close and see if we can see anything. Like I said, I just kind of pulled it out and popped it in here. I don't really see any fine specs yet, but we'll see. I'm just gonna give this a little spray and get it uh, cleaned down and. Alright, give me a second. I can't do this with uh, one hand and uh, we'll get right back. Alright, so I got it all strained out. And it's down to, uh, down to 30. And uh, we're going to set this aside. Go through it later. Hope springs eternal. Maybe we'll find a nugget. Maybe we won't. You can actually see... Yeah, there's a couple little flakes like right on the surface from where I strained it, but see that guy in there or not. 
Anyway, so we're gonna add this one to our bucket from first run. And we'll see how we do when we come back. Let me go ahead and transfer over this uh, material. Get it all into this bucket because that's what we're going to run out of. You can see this stuff's kind of heavy. I'm just kind of giving it a light wash down. It's all been screened down to 30 minus. All nice and clean. So this is a blue bowl, and it's uh, uh, basically blow molded plastic. It's a uh, cone in the center, a little lip, and an and an edge, you know, a little hole in the center. There's water that comes in from right here. It goes round and around and around. We'll show you that in a second. It's fed by a hose. See that hose comes all the way over here to... Now any brand is okay. I just happen to like this brand and you know nobody's paid me for that. This just happens to be the one that works for me. It may not work for you. Don't send me angry emails or comments. Uh, this is just what works for me. So, a little tsunami pump, the blue bowl, and of course, need a bucket. Buckets are great. And this one, I happen to use a little riser that I made from a broken bucket. And there's a hole in that. We'll get into that in maybe a later video, I don't know. But, I set that there. And it comes with some of these levelers, okay? See what those look like? <clears throat> Got a little platform and a little screw. Sort of gives you a level. So I'm going to pop these on. You can see they kind of uh, camera. So you can see they kind of just seat in there. All right. And each one of those will just sit on there. So I'm going to go ahead and go around and put all three of those on. And then uh, put some water in there. And then we'll get on to setting the blue bowl on there and getting it level. Because getting it level is a really important part. All right. Give me just a sec. So we set the blue bowl up. Got it set on our little pegs all the way around. All right. And now you're going to see... There's a little knob here. This little knob is a valve that controls the speed of the, the, the flow of the water that comes through here. The more flow, the more speed. The more speed that you've got going around, the water level will rise up. And that's important to know because the higher the water level, the faster it goes and if it goes too fast and your gold is really really I mean like you know little specks you can see the black sand that's down in here okay you see that stuff you see how small that is it's just a little bit that I have and I have a little I give you an idea I had a snuffer bottle that I dumped out in here so that I could show you this and and you could get an idea of just how small the gold is. You see those two little specks right there? There's one here and one there. 
those two little specks are the gold that we're getting out of this black sand. It is that incredibly small. So, really small stuff, but it's it's just fun to go after. It's it's a technical challenge more than anything. You're never going to get rich doing this. So just get those ideas out of your head right now. You may, in the course of a year, if you really work at it, you might, maybe, maybe, pay for the fuel it costs to go out and do all this. This is nothing more than a hobby. You will never get rich going after this kind of gold. You would have to be right on top of the source, seriously. And, and even then, it would be tough. There's big tools that do it, but they cost tens of thousands of dollars. This is just hobby stuff, just for fun. So keep that in mind when when I show you this stuff. This isn't a way to get rich, by not by a long shot. And we'll come right back to you as soon as I get some water in here and get this started up and flowing and we'll show you what it looks like when it runs. All right, so now we're gonna check for level. And we find out that it needs to come up a little bit. So what we're gonna do is go over to these little screw things here. And I'm gonna go and turn the one on this side down. I know, this is complex rocket science here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm turning a screw to make a water level seem level. All right. So as we rejoin our project, you notice it's a bit brighter out. So a bit later in the day, I forgot to charge my phone and my gimbal. So, uh, yeah, as we resume, we realize we got to bring that up a bit. So we come over to our leveling leg here, and we're going to raise this up a bit. You see that's coming along. And really, you see, all you do is you turn it, all right? Close enough for government work. Now we're level. Now we can turn it on and kind of see what's going on with it as we, uh, as we start to work. So give me just a second. All right, All right so I turned the, uh, the blue bowl on and you can see that little speck of gold maybe right in there, sort of right there. And there's a couple other little specks, but basically, all the material, the water flow, is going around and around, okay? And the force of the water is moving the lightest material toward the center, and up the cone, and over the little lip, and down the center. And that's where the tailings go. The tailings are what's left over after you've extracted whatever it is you're going after. Now, this here, this is my little cleanup sluice, I have it in there so that the water that's dripping down over the edge doesn't get sucked into my pump's intake. That's the surest way to ruin one of your pumps. So now, you can kind of see where the water level is a little bit. Let's, uh, there's just no good, there we go. There's a good angle. 
So you can kind of see how far up it is from the edge. Let's get that wet so that you can kind of see. See how far that is from the edge? And the idea here is that when you put some material in this, that that gold isn't gonna move around. You want it to be just, the water to be moving just fast enough to move the black sand, but not anything out, not the gold. So, some people are so particular about their water flow that they actually measure it by like, you know, CFMs. I mean, seriously, they are that particular about it. But the, the one good bit about that is with this machine is that if you are that particular and you do want to be that in-depth about it, you can separate gold from platinum. Oh yeah, it takes a while. You have to run it at a very specific speed of, of flow, but you can separate gold from platinum if you wanted to. Now I know there are some, some people who suffer with that affliction, the, the difficulty of separating their gold from their platinum. These people deserve our, our pity and our solace and, and our advice on, on how to overcome this tragedy. I know that I, I would never want to be afflicted with having to separate my gold from my platinum. It's, oh, the horror of it all. But you can do it with this machine. I mean, I've never been that fortunate. <laughs> I catch a couple of little specks every now and then, and that's, that's really enough for me. So anyway, I'm going to let this run, and then I'm going to come back and, and uh, show you what, uh, what our concentrate looks like coming through this. And it, you know, it takes a while. I can put a camera on the next one, and we'll do a, we'll do a nice little time lapse of what it looks like going all the way through. Hey right, folks, we're back. Got my super fancy-dancy filming rig and uh, battery backup. By the way, if you guys have to run an action cam in a remote area, Get yourself a battery backup. My gosh, PNY, these folks are awesome, and no, I'm not paid to endorse them. I just like stuff that works. It works. So, I popped in two teaspoons of our concentrate that we got earlier from running, there it is. That's the concentrate we got from running everything through the gold cube. Now this does take a while, so you're probably going to see the rest of this video. Yeah, well, you know, you'll see it, you know, obviously when it comes out. But for me, it's probably going to be a day or two before I work through all of this material because I want to do it really carefully, really slowly, because I want to be able to show you just exactly what's in this sand. Now we have added a little bit of, uh, of a liquid soap. And that's a surfactant. And surfactant, it's a really fancy word for something that breaks the surface tension of water. Hello. And we put a little bit of that in there. And then that's going to help also help the recirculating pump. So that we don't have to, you know, waste water or, or do anything like that. That's also the really super cool part about these systems. You can recirculate the water. And if you're really super careful about how you settle and filter your water, if you're in a really remote spot, you can actually get quite a few uses out of a few gallons of water. Obviously, you'll lose some to evaporation. But through settling, you can get most of this pretty darn clean to keep on reusing it. We just add really clean concentrates. That way, we don't have to worry about that. But, you know, it is what it is. So here we are all, all ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and get this turned on and uh, I'll show you what that looks like when it just starts running. All right. So I just started my... Uh, my other camera so that I could capture this in a bit of a time lapse for you. But you can already see the telltale sawtooth pattern that a lot of people talk about forming. I don't know if you can see that really well. Let me try and go around in a different light. 
All right, you see that sawtooth pattern forming? That tells us that pretty much the entire thing is about as level as it's really gonna get. So we're gonna let this run, and I'll uh, show you what that time lapse looks like. camera set up that we had our time-lapse set up with go around the edge just kind of try to uh, let's see if I can get in here without like killing my camera So you can see there's some little specks in there. I'll try and get a little closer. You see those in there? Go around the edge. All right, that's the gold. Not much of it, but I'm gonna put it in a little pile, and we'll we'll show you what two teaspoons of this in a. Yeah, well, it was about two teaspoons and we ran it down, so I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. Okay, so I got that uh, moved around with a snuffer bottle and sort of into one area. You can kind of see that there. And then it's a little bit of black sand and a couple little specks of, specks of gold. So, yeah, there is gold in the sand and, and that's sort of what a blue bone roll blue bowl run looks like and I'm gonna go ahead and run the rest of this and I'm certainly not gonna show you that because it is mind-numbingly boring and it's gonna take me all day tomorrow to do that so we'll uh, see you back then when uh, I got a little bit of gold in the pan to show you and uh, by the way hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and uh, thank you Alright, so we're down to the very last little bit. And I'm just uh, getting this picked up in the snuffer bottle. Here we go, and that's all of it. Let's look at that in the pan. Okay. So there we go. Goes all the way around. Let me try and get this in now. Uh... You can see how. Uh... 
just how dense and heavy this stuff is. It just wants to stay right there. So I was trying to give it a tap to try and get this all in one spot for you, but... trying to peel this off but if anybody uh, a lot of people who've worked with black sand and gold know that this stuff is just really heavy especially when you get down to this end of it but that's about as good as I can get it I'd have to put it back in the blue bowl I'm not a I'm not an expert painter or anything I just you know, it's a little fun and hobby for me. But uh, that's a good result. That's not bad for three coffee cans. Well, three gallons. It's basically three gallons of, of black sand, random, unsorted black sand right off of the beach. That's not a bad result. No. Yeah. Pretty good. There's even a couple of nice little pieces in there that are kind of uh, kind of bigger that kind of moved around on me, but it's pretty good. Not bad for a fun little hobby. Well, thanks for watching, and uh, if you enjoyed this video, remember to give it a great big thumbs up and. Uh, Hit that subscribe button down there. I'd really appreciate it. So, thanks for watching. Until next time, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Have a great day.